Hi guys, welcome back to my channel, Critics Cup. My name is Jacob, and today we're having a look at the first time ever Lego Marvel Visual Dictionary in 2023. Uh, they've never made one of these books for the Lego Marvel theme. They've done it for DC, Harry Potter, Star Wars, but never for Marvel. So this is the first time we're getting this. And if you want to see more content like this, make sure you like and subscribe on this video and leave a comment on your thoughts on this book. Uh, it does come with the exclusive Iron Man minifigure, which we will take a look at later on in this review. Uh, there is a, quite a few mistakes throughout this whole book, so we're just going to go through page by page, and I'll point out mistakes that I find in the video. So let's start by taking a look at the cover itself. You've got all the core characters on the front. So you've even got the buildable Groot off to the left here. Standard, like so. It's enormous, like it's huge like i was not expecting this to be like that uh you got a couple marvel sets got black panther and shang chi set the dot strange set there bit random selection if you ask me but i guess they're kind of relevant somewhat but no 2023 sets and it retails for 20 pounds in the uk so open it up you got a double page spread here of some uh, eternal set the new volume three guys galaxy ship up here is where you find your minifigure, which is broken down to pieces. Much more better that they break the figures apart now, so the figures last longer. Uh, but yeah, they've got the dragon up there as well. And they've got the two figures from the Infinity War wave of Groot and Rocket, which is kind of random. But yeah, pretty random. Up, we've got Spider-Man on the front here. And here is the list of the contents page with all the different chapters of all various characters that will be going over but as i said we'll be going through each page and i'll point out any of the mistakes first things first we've got the introduction to lego marvel so the group lego group introduced this theme back in 2012 but they don't mention that it actually began 20 years ago over 20 years ago so in 2002 with the lego spider-man theme for the baby sets now the great boxes is going to be non-mcu stuff so this is all comic based so like even though this is technically <laughs> kind of mcu but i guess it came in the comic set very cool set one of my favorite sets of all time from 2017 where you get agent colson i do love the agents of shield tv show very underrated show um you won't see every variation of the minifigures in here as well which is a bit of a disappointment but i guess this is an encyclopedia it's a visual dictionary you've got the best lego marvel set of all time in my opinion the daily bugle which comes with a fantastic range of figures a bit of a year-by-year -year history so as i said so that for some reason they mentioned the first iron man and incredible hulk films when the t uh, films first started but never made sets of them apart from the ironmonger set from a couple years ago so it's a bit ridiculous that they kind of start the timeline here when realistically the sets begun here in 2012 but as i said before the Raimi sets came out 10 years before that so it's a bit all over the place really but yeah you've got a cool selection of sets here some of the best lego marvel sets are on this page in my opinion i do hope they do some cool comic based sets in 2024 got more of the timeline here showcasing some of the sets but yeah um this is when my channel first blew up was when they released the infinity saga wave that's when it all began for me but yeah, and they just show quite a few of the recent stuff, but they don't show the No Way Home set, unfortunately. So, of course, Spider-Man is going to be our first section. Now, this figure of Hobgoblin gets a lot of play in the magazines and stuff, so it's kind of weird they haven't remade him recently, considering he's only been made once before, like Craven the Hunter, again, another big character that's not been remade. We've got the Homecoming Bank set, which was a good little set. Got a couple of exclusive figures in that. If you want to pause and read any of it, feel free to, but it would have been nice to see more of the um, rest of the sets. You've got the poly bag here, which has got a whole spread up here. You've got no, no Way Home, some of the variants of the minifigures, which are kind of cool. I do like this figure with the open mask. I think that's a very cool minifigure. Then you got his friends and allies, so you've got Happy up here, who, one of the worst movie figures ever made. Uh, they don't show all the versions of Ned and MJ for some reason. Uh, the, these sets are like peak Lego Marvel in general, like the bridge battle set is so iconic. 
you've got Gwen Stacy, MJ. Next up, Miles Morales, of course, gets his own spread. I just recently got this figure. Um, that is exclusive to that spike set. Uh, this set was kind of, we're getting a recolor of in blue in the January wave, so stay tuned for that. It came with Morbius, which is really cool, and a brand new Mars Morales figure. Very cool set. We've got the Web Warriors, which I think is a clever way of doing it, because they've done quite a few Web Warrior characters over the years. So you've got Scarlet Spider, really cool minifigure, and some of the female Spider Women. Spider Gwen. Uh, 2099 Noir, Spider Ham, excellent minifigures. Basically, this whole page is just some of the worst Lego sets in general. I do quite like this mech, but all the rest, these are just ugh, not very good. The figures in them included, though, are terrific. But yeah, if you want to pause at any point and have a closer look at any of these, you can. But I, I would not recommend many of these sets, to be honest. The Spider Lair, which I've still not done an expansion to which is kind of odd, but it shows you some of the cool exclusive suits. It is a pretty cool set, but I feel like it's kind of just a very small section of an armory, and then it's just kind of like all these big plates and stuff. I feel like they could have done better with this set in general. It's a bit of a mishmash of parts. So Daily Beagle gets its own double page, but they do not include anything about the Punisher. Which is kind of ridiculous in my opinion because there's other 18 plus sets in this book. So that's one of the mistakes I've noticed and a lot of pe other people have. I'm trying to, they mention him down here though as one of the minifigures included. But no images of him unfortunately. I don't think kids would really notice him too much if he was in here regardless. And also as well, he's in like some of the cartoons with Spider-Man, like the 90s animated show. So I don't, I think it would go over most kids' heads. I don't know why this set gets so much space. I never bought it. There's no exclusive minifigures. Green Goblin Max kind of cool concepts, but yeah, not great. Uh, one of the best big figs ever. I love this big figure of the ultimate Green Goblin. One of the best minifigures from Lego Marvel as well, the Green Goblin. I did a whole Green Goblin minifigure comparison video if you guys want to check that out. Uh, Hobgoblin, as I say, has only been made once, but came with a very cool 2016 set with Ghost Rider. Uh, Dotcock, which would have been nice to see more versions. This set gets a lot of hate, but I quite like it. It's an underrated gem in my opinion. I prefer this to these mechs. Again, why is this getting a whole page? I do not understand. Uh, you've got some other versions of him. This is a cool set I recently got on a uh, late date. You've got Iron Fist, which is included here. Which uh, Cool to see Iron Fist there. Venom. Now, Venom has a really cool page spread here because he's had so many cool sets. I did a video comparing on most of these versions of Venom, if you want to check that out on my YouTube channel. It's a bit old now, but yeah. Uh, the T-Rex, I wish it was just a standalone set without the spider bug. He's such a cool set. I think it, went, it was very overlooked when it first came out. So many cool features, like you can hide a skeleton in there, which is quite graphic. Uh, this mech is incredible, really cool set. One of the best poly bags ever made here with the symbiote. Spider Crawler was a cool recolor of another Spider-Man set. And then a Venom mech here. We are rumored to be getting a 2024 bigger version of this. And then you've got a couple of variants. This is shown they don't show both versions of Iron Venom, which is kind of annoying. There's just so many little things like that that Lego don't show, which is absurd. I don't even think they show you both variations of Venom because he has had two different face prints over the years. You can see them there, like the older style head print there. Vulture, okay. I kind of get why he's got a page, but yeah. Uh, really cool to see. You've basically got all the core versions of him here. This set's not that great, <laughs> and neither is this set, but the Vulture stuff is really cool. Yeah, he's had some good figures. Uh, Shocker also has a figure here. I hope they make a comic version of him because, well, he could do with the upgrade, to be honest, with the mask and everything, which was a really cool part of the character. Mysterio is quite a big character now, but as you can see here, there's not a lot of Mysterio stuff. It's just the Far From Home sets, which are really good sets. I think this is the weakest set. These two sets... Hands down, really good. Uh, but yeah, you've got Mysterio in the comic version there. You've got Hydro Man and stuff like that. Very, very cool. 
the Stark jet, which is okay set. Stealth suit, Molten Man, very cool character. Shame that these two are not real characters in the film. Sandman gets his own page. He's had quite a few variations. Again, I just did a comparison on all the Sandman minifigures if you want to see them in closer detail. And Rhino's only had a couple figs. But yeah, the, that's the best Sandman in my opinion. Both versions of Carnage, that's such a cool figure with the arm printed and the toe printed. Really well made. But I can't believe Carnage gets a page when the Let There Be Carnage film was quite... Uh, rated 15 here in the UK and yet Punisher is not included. Glad to see them mentioned in Ghost Rider but he's had quite a few adult based films so yeah it's all just a bit all over the place really I'm not really too impressed with the way Lego have done this. Uh, Doctor Doom will hopefully get a new minifigure one, one day. The Beetle I don't think is ever going to get another remake of the figure but this set like why aren't they showing the original Daily Bugle they could have done like comparison between the two when they were talking about the newer version this set sucks apart from that this set is pretty cool quite underrated but yeah you can see all the different villains here like these two don't get made like he's only been made once he's not been in too many sets one of the best sets see i think this set should have been up here as a big page bread because it's just so iconic it goes for a lot of money on the aftermarket because it has so many cool figures and it's just a cool set Ghost Rider <laughs> um, from 2016, really cool to see him here, you can see there, he's had three different versions of that minifigure now, or character, uh, all his allies, again, no Punisher, but Daredevil's here and Blade's here, so it's just really weird how Lego have done it, so Black Cat's kind of in the middle as a character. The Avengers, even though these aren't really Avengers specific set, apart from maybe this one. But yeah, bit random of sets. Oh, Iron Man, you got a whole spread about him, of course. This set's pretty cool, I do like that. See that, getting some attention. Some of the other suits are sprinkled throughout this book, but there's just so many here that are missing. It would have been really cool to just have them all on one whole page, just every single Iron Man, which I will be doing a video of one day when I finish the collection. I'm only missing one or two. Um, but yeah, like the Mark II, is, so they're confirming it's a Mark II, but they said it was a, wasn't the Mark II, so it's kind of weird. Like these two, they class as the Mark 30 and Mark 22, but in the set they come in, they just call the Blazer and Taser, so that's another inconsistency that I would like to throw in there. It would have been nice to just see all these on one page and like have them going in order so people could like display them properly. Same with the Hulkbusters, there's been so many. I'm surprised they didn't just do every Hulkbuster. Kind of get what they're going for with all the Stark related items and vehicles. Yeah, some really cool sets here. Igor has, has grown on me over the years as a suit. And this is probably the best one they've ever made that came out at, earlier in 2023. And just Tower, so you see if they waited they could have done the UCS one that's about to come out. So this is the second version of it from the comics so this is a pretty cool set i did a mock of this set as well like customizing it a few years back if you want to check that out as well i guess this book is a good way of advertising my older videos captain america the worst set he ever came in <laughs> and they give it the most space i just it's just ridiculous what they're doing here but yeah you got this is a kind of cool vehicle but again like why not just show all the different versions of captain america or talk about certain things that were skipped over. Hydra gets quite a lot here and aim, but they don't show too many of the sets. These are some really cool sets they've done with Hydra over the years. You've got Crossbones, which is really cool. You see him there. Aim up here. But it's just like, just seems a bit random. Like, just so much wasted text and space on two things that have not been relevant in media for a long time. Hydra's kind of popular but not that popular. War is really cool. Gets a page. He has some pretty good sets to be honest. The goat boat I've, as I said in my retirement uh, retirement list video I think this set's going to be worth a lot going down the line. This set is definitely worth a lot now what, since that's been retired because it was an exclusive to Tesco. Uh, this set might be worth something if it, people want to try and get these figures cheap but I don't see that happening. Asgard. So I'm surprised Loki hasn't got a whole page because Loki's had quite a few 
figures and sets over the years. But Hella's got a whole spread. Really cool figure. One of the best figures Lego I've made. With that headpiece. Um, don't know why they use the CGI rendering of Loki. Instead of the official set pictures. And you've got Fenris Wolf. Which, okay. Was just a creature to fight in one movie. Panther definitely deserves a whole page. He's got so, like he's had two films worth of sets now. and Plus other sets he's been in. Very cool to see all these. And he has quite a few iconic vehicles in my opinion. But yeah, you get like a bit of a read up about him. Yeah, really cool to see that. And then Wakanda is very relevant because they just had a film come out last year. This set is very underrated in my opinion. I really like that set. Some of the side characters. She's getting a Disney Plus show next year. Um, but yeah, uh, this set's terrible, but comes with some cool figures. I guess that's basically everything Marvel's built around is terrible to mediocre sets with fantastic figures. Doctor Strange gets a whole page. But it doesn't get too many sets for some reason, even though there's so much potential with him. And you've got some of the other figures there. The Santum Santorum from a few years ago now. Really cool modular building, but it's not my favourite of the three. But yeah, I've already gone into that. Uh, this video is going to probably go on for quite some time. Such an iconic shot. Black Widow. But I'm not seeing too much of Black Widow, mainly just the vehicles. But yeah, she has had some really cool minifigures. Don't know why they're showing this from... I don't know what set that is. What set is that from? Oh, the Helicarrier. Very random. Helicarrier Jet. Uh, Red Guardian up here. Thank you for rubbing salt in the wound on that one. Because uh, that was a exclusive with a white Black Widow. As you can see there, you've got some of the side characters. Hulk. Some cool Hulk big figs we've had over the years. One of the most iconic sets from Mega Marvel. Like that big figure is so cool. I'm so happy that got made as an official figure to this day. Uh, that set sucks, but the figures are really good again. She Hulk. The MCU version of the minifigure there. And the Infinity Gauntlet. This set sucks again. Cool minifigures. Captain Marvel's got a whole page because she's also got a new movie coming up. Don't know why this is getting a lot of spread because you can't even buy this. All right. It goes for probably quite a bit of money. The scrolls get a little bit of a say up there. I just literally picked this figure up. So that's cool to see here. Really random that they did a whole new mould for a hairpiece and then they've not reused it since 2020. Hawkeye definitely deserves a whole spread because he's one of the core six Avengers. So I was getting a bit worried that he wasn't going to get a page. But yeah, uh, he's a cool character. Would like to see more Lego Hawkeye. I do love this motorbike, really cool with the purple. And the, oh, that sets, I, I played with that set a lot as a kid. Ant-Man and the Wasp. So that's pretty cool to see them. But we did get a new Ant-Man minifigure this year, but we're getting a Wasp minifigure. It's just, uh, just so annoying. We haven't had an Ant-Man minifigure since like 2018 or 2019, if you want to count the Quantum Realm suit, but... I don't think many people are counting that. Uh, the airport battle set, one of the best Marvel sets ever made. The van as well. War Machine, surprisingly, gets a whole section, which is good, because he's going to be getting his own solo film one day, eventually. But yeah, um, the worser version of the Hall of Armour, I prefer the old style. Iron Patriot gets a whole page, so that's kind of cool to see up there. Would have been cool if they mentioned some of the history of the character being normal Norseborn and stuff. Even the Mandarin's got a little bit of a page here. Vision and the Scarlet Witch, which makes sense to have these two together. And Vision, it's got a really, really cool minifigure coming out of the Avengers Tower that got leaked. So I can't wait for that. Scarlet Witch, she's had quite a lot of minifigures. Quicksilver, hopefully he'll get remade one day for people. But it doesn't look like Quicksilver's making a comeback anytime soon. Falcon and the Winter Soldier, of course, because of their TV show. Uh, but yeah, uh, it's really cool to see all these different versions. That Billy figure's quite rare because it came in a blister pack. Winter Soldier. So that's a polybag version of him, which is really cool. So you could kind of swap the faces between comics and MCU, which is really unique. 
and it was our only Winter Soldier related Lego set. Marvel's got a whole page, even though she came in one set, and that version there from the Amazing Friends set. I guess because of a new movie and TV show. But it doesn't really make too much sense. Same with Pepper Potts. Like, Pepper Potts is not coming back to the MCU in, anytime soon. I just don't see that happening. Nick Fury. So he's just had a TV show that was pretty terrible. <laughs> that came out earlier this year. But the character is still really cool in my opinion. This set's fantastic. I loved that set as a kid. Coulson gets a whole section which is nice to see him get represented here. It would have been cool to get a new version of the Avengers Tower though. Maria Hill. Up here. Really cool minifigure with arm printed. Uh, the Winter Soldier version, stealth suit of Captain Carter. This set is really cool. That was only like nine quid with the really cool carnage. Thing. First UCS Lego Marvel set, which I still remember buying from Toys R Us when it was on offer when I first got my first pay slip when I first started working. And I went out and bought this. I'm so glad I did. Stickers are slight, starting to peel away because this set's so old now. But yeah really cool set the quinjet so there's been quite a few versions of the quinjet so you've got the original one down here and the age of ultron version um it would have been nice to see uh, the civil war one as well and the end game one thanos definitely deserves his own page so you get some really cool facts about thanos he's had quite a lot of sets because of course he's very popular and there's the Space Iron Man suit. As I said before, the Iron Man suits are kind of spread out all over this book. The Children of Thanos, which we only ever got a new version of Ebony Moore, so I'm kind of surprised these guys are getting a whole page to themselves. Like two pages, even. A bit random, we could have just squeezed them all in one area, but okay. And they don't even show the second Ebony Moore mini figure from the Santum. Which is kind of odd. The Shatari, which they don't show too much of. I would have preferred a double page for the Shatari because they've had quite a few vehicles and sets over the years. But I guess it's still kind of cool to see. Uh, Outriders have been done to death, and we're apparently getting more of them in the Avengers Tower promo, which is really weird. Ultron. This is the only version of Ultron I do not own, except the new one that's not come out yet. But uh, yeah, Ultron. Definitely should get more play in the MCU, especially after What If. Speaking of What If, you've got the Watcher up here, and Gore, and Modok, a bit random, Hyperion. I need this figure as well, or buildable character, I suppose, as well. Human villains, we've got Ironmonger, Whiplash, and Claw. Detroit's still really cool set. Very underrated. Would have been nice if it had a printed dome element. It's a car, which I don't think too many people are familiar with because it only popped up in one movie and a couple references here and there. But yeah, still kind of cool to see. Korg and Beak. Tolokan, which I don't know when we're going to be revisiting in this story in the MCU anytime soon. Guys of the Galaxy definitely deserve their whole spread. Star Lord here. I guess this is a double page dedicated to Star Lord's history as a character. Got both versions of the Milano. Very cool. I wish this one was the one that was bigger because that's the better version, even though the colours are accurate. But yeah, the Milano is a pretty cool set, really, in my opinion. Nice to see that the Milano still gets some reference. Rocket and Green. So Rocket is definitely a very popular character after the third movie that just came out. Groot, they, I wish they showed the Ravager version of this as well. But yeah, uh, they showed the original versions of these characters, which is nice to see. And guess one of his biggest moments in the MCU. Gamora and Drax. So, got a whole page about here. I do like how they go into some of the history of these characters, but... There's just a few things missing. Mantis and Nebula don't get much of a spread. Though. Which is the second ship, the Benatar. Where they had the UCS version here. Very cool set. Got that for half price. Uh, yeah, really cool. Some of their other iconic vehicles throughout all the sets over the years. And some of the villains. Like Ronan, who we're rumored to be getting a new figure off next year. And Rocket's version of this, the Warbird. Or this set, set, I should say. But the Bowie, again, they can't do it for copyright reasons, call it the Bowie, even though they do in the films. But yeah, uh, it's a pretty decent set. I kind of wish it was a bit bulkier though. Adam Warlock up here. And maybe Rocket's got a whole bit 
one of the terrible set that is. Wish it came with the high evolutionary or something just to complete it. Eternal. So I guess they made this book quite a while ago because this film is very divisive in media and stuff. But I think the film's okay. It would have made a better TV show considering there's 10 Eternals. But I think in a few years' time, these sets are going to definitely go up in value when people come looking back on So we've got Shang-Chi and The Legend of the Ten Rings. Really good MCU movie, kind of gets forgotten about because of the other stuff that people don't really like. But yeah, very cool film. So we've got a whole double page to the X-Men, which is nice, but they have Deadpool's helicopter, but no Deadpool. <laughs> Seriously. I guess the films are really tainting that character for Lego. Got quite a few Wolverine minifigures in here. Still not all of them though. Got Magneto and the new Blackbird coming out next year. Uh, special sets. Oh, so there's the other Miss Marvel. Don't know why that wasn't on her page though. You've got buildable characters, which we are rumoured to be getting three new ones next January or early next year. Yeah, these sets are just not very good. Even this one's not great. The old mech was so much better. But it's nice to see these three sets get a bit of history here. Considering they definitely did sell well. Brickheads. Really cool to see all these. I'm missing quite a few of them. I'm missing these two. And these two here. But yeah. Every Brickhead that Lego have officially made. But these are the Comic Con ones. So these two are Comic Con. These two are Comic Con. And these two are Comic Cons. Or saying so, yeah, bit cool to see them, but it's a bit ridiculous that Lego haven't just released these guys individually. Mighty Micros, so yeah, I think this is majority of them, if not all the Mighty Micros on this page, which is really cool. So you can see all of them on here. These fins are really cool. Ah, here's the mech suits, oh, Lego's favorite. So we have. The old wave. This poly bag randomly. Gets her whole saying. And then they don't talk about the hip joint problem they had with these three mechs. So, but these are the three best ones on this whole page, definitely. The CMF. So they don't have the Series 2, but they have Series 1, which is good to see. And they talk about all the TV shows these cats are from there. Very terrific minifigures. So glad Lego continued to make these. Just stop making them in boxes, please. Sculptures. Uh, one of the worst Lego, worst selling Lego Marvel sets ever. But yeah. The buildable Groot's good, but no Venom Groot in here. I guess it was just too new. I guess these books are just never going to be up to date. There's always going to be more Lego sets coming out as these books come out. So I guess that's just one thing to bear in mind. I just recently finished building this set, which is really cool. This set's retiring, which I'm not surprised. I feel like if it just came with an exclusive figure, it would have sold a little bit better. But even then, I don't think it would have sold that great. It's a nice tribute set. It was just too expensive for people. Uh, people would have preferred it at the, this sort of range in price. Carnage is a really cool one. I would recommend. Then we'll get some history about some exclusives, which is kind of interesting. It would have been nice to see Sheriff Deadpool and Deadpool Duck. But they do include the PS4 and PS5 Spider-Man minifigures, which I'm really surprised by. Those figures go for a lot of money. Uh, art sets. So, again, they don't have the Amazing Spider-Man one here. This set I built earlier this year. Pretty cool. The Advent Calendar. So they just no mentioned the previous two, not the new one. Uh, Spider and his amazing friends. Even Duplo gets a little bit of a sexual. I kind of wish I did a whole page to Duplo because I don't really follow them. I don't know what characters they've made in Lego. Would have been nice to learn about that. But yeah, um, pretty random. And then you've got the 2003 to 2004 sets, which only get one page. And then included here as well as the old studio set from even earlier. Yeah, it would have been nice to see more history about these sets, but considering they were the beginning of the Lego Marvel theme. So here you can see some of the behind the scenes stuff.
which is really cool. All the design team. I don't know if these guys are still in the team as of the time where I'm recording this video, but yeah, these guys do a really good job with the theme. Very talented people like to do what they do and just to come up with all this stuff is crazy. Um, uh, they have to work in within certain limitations as designers, which we will never fully understand ourselves. Here you go, a history of the team with everybody's names, which is really nice. But yeah, like every Lego theme and things in general, not everything's perfect at the end of the day. You've got to remember that there are still people that are just limited by the company standards and stuff like that. But here, look, this is really nice. Uh, so it was designed by, uh, sorry, I'm not going to be able to pronounce that name. But this is really nice. I think that's really cool to see that they shout out the designer. So here figure. is the Lego Iron Man minifigure included in this book. Really cool printing on the toes and the legs, hip printing. Really well made. It's definitely very unique and inspired by different comic versions of Iron Man. Uh, you can see his back torso printing there as well. He's using the newer style of helmet piece as well that they introduced a couple years ago now where the visor does pop open and you can see the figure. Moving the helmet, you can get a better look at the face print, which they still haven't changed to and this day. yeah, you've got some quotes here. And here we've got some more behind the scenes stuff. Look, you can see the prototype versions of these sets. Really cool. Really interesting. I think this is probably the best stuff in this book to read about. It's really cool uh, that they talk about a lot of different things here. I'm not going to go into every little detail here. But you could just see the price behind the scenes process. I mean, look at Cold Obsidian there and the gold. That is super cool. They could re release that as a comic version or something. Uh, we've got some more of the behind the scenes history here. Look, you can see some of the sketches and how it all kind of gets made. I mean, look here, you've got the Civil War Quinjet. And just all the different models it takes them to get this right. That is really nice to see. And you've got some more quotes. I think this stuff is definitely the best stuff to read. And then you just got the index at the back. And they've got this other little page on the back. And some stuff about Lego Insiders and the wind, which is kind of like the back of the instructions. So that's kind of clever they've done that. And that's everything included in the book. That is everything in this book. Let me know your thoughts down in the comment section. Did you notice any other mistakes that I may have missed? Let me know. And let me know what figures you would like to see included in the future. I know some people would have preferred a unique new character. Or just anything but another I am had to collect. Because there's just so many. And it's hard to keep up. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye for now.